Hey Math uh, 85 students, we are working through section 5.2 on decimal operations. Uh, the last series of videos, you, we described what decimals were, and we were able to convert between decimals and fractions pretty easily. And now we will be working on adding and subtracting decimals, multiplying, dividing, and then using decimals in application problems. So first, let's talk about adding and subtracting. Uh, the method is to line up the place values and add the corresponding places together. So for example, 3 and 7 tenths plus 12 and 4 tenths will look like this. 3.7. Line up the whole number parts together. So tens place, ones place, so the, one places, the ones places are um, lined up together. And the decimal point is lined up. If you line up the decimal point, that automatically lines up all the places for you. And then we would add like normal regrouping when necessary. So 7 plus 4 is 11. Put down the 1, carry the 1. And then we drop the decimal point down in the same location. 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. And 1 plus 0 is 4. So we get uh, 16.1, which should make sense if we estimate this is approximately 12. And this is three close to 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. So it's approximately uh, correct. So the question is, why does it work just to add the corresponding places together? So if we think of 3 and 7 tenths, which is the same as 3.7, and add that to 12 and uh, 4 tenths, you can really just add the whole number parts together, 3 plus 12, to get your new whole number part, and then add to that the fraction parts which is 7 tenths plus 4 tenths. So then the 3 plus the 12, there's your 15. And then the seven, this is 11 tenths, which is really 1 and 1 tenth. So this will become 16 and 1 tenth. So using fractions, we can kind of justify why is it that I can just add the whole number parts together, lining up the decimal places and then add the fractional parts together, lining up the decimal places, because it works when you think about it with fractions. All right, let's do a few more examples, uh, adding and subtracting decimals. 23.5 plus 41.38. And I would pause the video and try this on your own, and then replay it so you can check your answer. All right, so notice when I line these uh, decimal points up. You've got the ones places lined up, tens place, tenths places, and the hundredths place. There's an eight in the hundredths place in this number, but in this number there's nothing in the hundredths place. So you can put a, a zero there if you like. We talked about that last time, appending a zero onto the end of your number, because five tenths is the same as fifty hundredths. So you can always put a zero on the end. It doesn't change your number. Then we'll go ahead and add the corresponding places together. We get 64 and 88 hundredths here. Let's do a subtraction problem. 20, and again, please pause the video, attempt this on your own. 20 minus 14 and 65 hundredths. This problem is strange because the first number, 20, didn't have any values after the decimal point. So you can always um, add in a decimal point with zeros after it, and that, again, will not change your number. So that's what I'm going to do so that all of my place values that are shown have digits. All right, and in order to do this subtraction, you may want to um, regroup your place values. So you need to go over all the way to this 2, knock that down to a 1, right? And then give a group of 10 to this place value. And, um, of course, we need to regroup so that we have some values here in the tenths place. So knock that down to 9, make that a 10. And then we'll have to regroup so we have something here in the hundredths place. Knock this down to 9, make that a 10. All right, 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 6 is um, 3. 9 minus 4 is 5. So we get 5 and 35 hundredths which should make sense because this is 20 minus approximately 15. So you should get something that's like approximately 5. Okay, I'm using some estimation to make sense of my numbers here. Um, all right, last problem. This is another subtraction problem. Again, please pause the video. 
so you can try this on your own. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is line up my decimal points so that my ones place tenths and hundredths. Maybe I'll add a zero placeholder here. And then I want you to notice, wait a minute, this is a smaller value, take away a larger value. Usually what we did here is uh, we think about integers. A positive number, and then this is like plus a negative number. We do have to find the difference of the two numbers, but notice that you've got, it's like seven negatives and about two positives, so my results should be negative. And in order to do this subtraction, to find the difference of these two numbers, you really want to put the larger absolute value on top and the smaller absolute value on bottom. So we're going to subtract to find the difference of these two numbers. All right, when we subtract, we're going to need to regroup. All right, 10 take away 1 is 9. 3 take away 5, I will have to regroup again. If this is 6 and carry a group of 10 over into the next place, 15 minus 5 is 8. 15 minus 2 is 4. So the difference between the two numbers is 4 and 89 hundredths, but notice, again, I have more negatives than I have positives, so my results should be negative. So my answer here is negative 4 and 89 